You've also written extensively about Enron. A lot of pundits, myself included, have said, oh, it's a Lehman moment. I thought about it. I'm like, no, it's not a Lehman moment. That was kind of a, a slower burn at first. This feels a lot more like Enron. Well, Brian, I think the shock of how quickly this occurred uh, feels like Enron. Uh, there's a difference, though, uh, and of course, you know, the liabilities could be in excess of Enron, as you pointed out. Uh, and almost on a par with the Lehman Brothers bankruptcy. Uh, in some ways, though, it reminds me of the Bear Stearns bankruptcy and how quickly that disappeared in about a week. This was about the same time frame. The difference that I would note with regard to Lehman, with Bear, and even Enron is, you know, those were real companies, okay? Uh, those were, uh, you know, U.S. domestically uh, based companies uh, with uh, reputations that, in some cases, with Lehman Brothers went back 150 years. Uh, uh, Bear Stearns had been around for 85 yeah. years. Obviously. Thousands and, of employees. Thousands of employees. SEC filings, Brian. I mean, FTX. What's had that? None what's of an that. SEC filing, Bill? Right, exactly. Among friends, what's an SEC filing? You know, I think the Wall Street Journal made a very good point uh, in its editorial this morning about the Fed's responsibility of this. If, you know, if the Fed had not had 13 years of zero interest rate policies, people wouldn't be looking around the world for, you know, easy, get rich quick schemes. And I think that's what Bitcoin has become, unfortunately. It's a very interesting idea and a very interesting technology, but really it was based on a greater fool theory. And yeah. I think all of crypto has been based on, on that. And well, I don't think that's, I think that's probably maybe something that's going to save this from being too contagious. Because really, I mean, what does, what did crypto do? What is it, uh, you know, you can't really nothing. use it. It took to money things, from, right? it took can't money from it. smart people and gave it to other people that somebody had exactly. apparently had said was smart because, you know, they went to MIT. So how could they not be smart? And, and I guess right. it feels maybe Theranosian, is that a term, Elizabeth Holmes? Like, and we don't want to presume any liability or guilt here, but we do know there's a bankruptcy filing and everything. But I think what, if you look into Theranos, Theranos what Holmes Theranosian. was very... Yeah, Theranosian, yeah. I've coined that, you can hashtag it, yeah. was that she was very good at putting really respected people on her board, right? That, that if you sort of, you know, questioned certain things about the business, there was, there was cover there. I think we're finding out that Bankman Freed, whatever ends up happening, the FTX board had a, had a former F CFTC commissioner on it. He was a huge political donor. There were a lot of connections. You met Sam Bankman Freed. You did a documentary on him. In your mind, Bill, is he some genius who just screwed up? Or is there something maybe more nefarious or socio something about it? Well, of course, that's the sixty-four billion, potentially sixty-four billion dollar question right now. I mean, he had—he's young, right, Brian? He's you know just turned thirty. He was supposedly the wealthiest person under thirty uh, last year, last December, when I uh, interviewed him. He was twenty-nine. He sort of has this naivete about him, uh, but also, uh, uh, you know, MIT graduate, as you pointed out. Both his parents are Stanford law professors. Uh, clearly, you know, it was a Jane Street capital trader, obviously, quote unquote, brilliant, right? Uh, did he do this knowingly? I mean, that's something that the Justice Department is going to have to get to the bottom of. Uh, he was incredibly uh, charming in his way, uh, both with the media, uh, with lobbyists in Washington. Uh, you know, you're showing the Fortune cover story, which was just from last September literally on the cover of Fortune and, you know, ask, is he the next Warren Buffett? I think we know the answer to that now. Uh, he uh, charmed a lot of people and, you know, the largest donor to uh, one of the largest donors to President Biden in the 2020 cycle, a big donor to Democratic causes, philanthropic, uh, effective altruism. Yeah. He was a very charming, engaging, entrancing guy, especially when he's the uh, young, uh, the wealthiest person under 30. So a lot of people were, I don't want to use the word conned, but that's sort of what it feels like. We'll have to see whether this was fraudulent or not, Brian.